You know what I hate? I hate when I leave my tools outside. Because you know what happens? This. Rust. While it's all nice and plated on the inside, it's getting all rusty. And it makes it difficult to tighten and use. Well, I found a way to uh, fix that. And while not strictly paracording, I'm going to help you guys figure out how to. So stay tuned. So I have this pair of pliers. Left them sitting outside accidentally. And they got rusty, which totally sucks. So... I don't want to throw them out and they're still good they're still decent they're just really tough and no matter what even if I put in a little WD-40 they're rusting and they're uh, you can see where the rust is forming here and here I want to take care of that I found a good way to take care of that and I'm going to show you guys how because while our fids and things like that are all stainless steel they're not going to rust whether it be pliers, maybe you have a charm, maybe you're doing something it could uh, that might get rusty. Uh, my, gr my garage is where my workshop is. I know some people actually have outdoor workshops. I do a heck of my, a lot of my stuff while I'm at Scouts. And we're outside. Things get wet. They don't always get perfectly dried. So I'm going to show you guys how to deal with that. So what are you going to need? Well, you're going to need some type of container. I really like to use Chinese food containers, like this one. We eat enough Chinese in, in this household that uh, this was easy to come by. And you can see I've used it before. So I'm going to throw this in, as well as a pair of scissors I have that have started to rust out. Now, first thing I would normally do is if I can, and it will easily come off, I'd take off the handles. In this case, they're not going to. So I'm going to put this in. Handles on this aren't going to come off. So I'm going to put them in too. Now, what I usually suggest, <clears throat> I have the these things in here. Move the big stuff out of the way so you can make room. Now, what are you going to need? The only thing you're really going to need for this first step is white vinegar. Why white vinegar? Well, white vinegar is going to, it has an, um, and this, I'm just talking about every day, in this case, great value white vinegar. Uh, the distilled white vinegar will basically create a, uh, a, an acid that will eat through the rust and corrosion. But it's not something that will ha happen immediately. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour this in, like so. I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to move things around a little bit. Try and see if I can get this so I don't have to use too much. Yeah, I'm just going to need to pour more in. Vinegar is fairly cheap, so not too worried about... A little bit more. And I'm not worried about the handles. So that's what I'm going to do. Now you'll see I got a couple other things in here. I got some bolts and uh, I told you guys I've done, I do some woodworking. I like to reuse the nails 
and um, so I'll, a lot of times if I got a good straight nail I'll throw that in there too so what I usually do is I'll put this on but I don't seal it why the kid there's gonna be a chemical reaction and I'll come back later and show you guys what that looks like but it's gonna start generating and bubbling and eventually you're gonna have a weird kind of coat of rust that's just going to be sitting on the top of this and you're gonna let me see here it's not happening yet but soon as the vinegar let me zoom in on this as the vinegar starts reacting to the rust it will start bubbling and corroding or uh, bubbling and working its way through to eat that uh, rust off and it basically breaks the bond between the rust and the metal and creates a, um, a penetration layer so it, it 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 releases the rust from everything so we're going to put this on and generally speaking, I will leave this overnight and, and usually go for anywhere between 18 to 24 hours. Let me give you an example of something I've done already. These are some tin, tin snips I had. Now, you never saw them before, but they were completely rusted out. They were so bad, I couldn't even open and close them. Now, they work great. This is what I'll eventually be able to do. So, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to shut off the lights. going to let this sit. And we will uh, come back to this tomorrow. So it's been a couple of hours, but I wanted to let you guys know. Uh, there was a couple of things I had forgotten about that I wanted to put in with this mix. So you're going to see some additions. You will see that I added, uh, along with the screwdriver, uh, but I also took apart an Allen wrench set. You can see part, and you might be able to see some of the Allen wrenches and I put to get put in a, a drill bit and you'll see that now you can see that there's some activity where it's actually starting to bubble and react to the rust so this has only been a couple of hours since my last video but uh, Thought I'd share that just so no one could say that I wasn't on the up and up with this. So we'll be back tomorrow. Okay, everybody, it has now been 24 hours, so let's take a look. And ooh, gross. You can see, let's zoom in a little bit here. You can see that the. Uh, it's gotten really disgusting and you can probably see little bubbles occasionally popping up that means that it's continuing to do the chain reaction of the vinegar at this point it's got most of it off so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start cleaning it so what I have done is I have an old coffee bucket here because yes in the this household we drink enough coffee and for those of you who are interested cafe bustella <clears throat> so what we're going to do is first we're going to take it and i'm going to just take a give it a quick once look over and if you look you'll see looks like the rust has actually just disappeared from this one so i'm going to just dip it in get the the idea is just to get the uh, the vinegar off. I'm gonna wipe it down. Had a little too much uh, 
foam. And then I'm going to let it sit. I have a towel. I'm going to put it off on the side. And I'm going to let this stuff sit for a little bit. And then I'll pat it dry. So in something like this, where there is actually rust in there, I have a wire brush. And I'm going to get in there. And then you can see it looks like some of this may just be staining. So this isn't deep enough, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, rinse it, get in there with my fingers, and just kind of wipe off any rust staining. As you can see, that was just rust staining that was left. Any rust that was there is completely gone. So we're going to do that with the rest. Check uh, this out. Looking at no rust at all. I'm going to take a little bit, kind of just double check, run it in there, just to make sure. Once again, the idea is get off any surface rust. Go in here, and I can tell it's already able to move better and a little bit freer. So the reason, I, the other reason I use the wire brim brush or the wire brush, is to get in. So like these are screws that I took off of my truck that used to hold up a. Um, they used to hold up a uh, step bar that I got rid of. Actually, it rusted out. So, but the screws were still good. So I figured I can, I know I could wind up reusing these. So, you're going to see my hands are getting a lot of the rust on them too. And that's okay. I'll wash. But if you look, you can see this, this former rusty screw now this is looking really good and soon it will look even better you see I'm getting some weird sledge that's the other reason you have to clean this stuff off Get rid of that any sludge that might be on there. And it's not so much grease. I've just noticed that sometimes after doing this, I get this weird black, like I said, smudge. So make sure you have a towel handy or a rag handy. And as always, after you do this, Make sure, one, if you're gonna scrape like this, make sure you're wearing eye protection. I am. Last thing you want is metal in your eye. And two, since this is vinegar, you really don't have any noxious chemicals or I mean it smells like a vinegar in here but you don't have anything that is going to harm you if you are worried feel free to wear a mask and as I said I'm only doing this just to get off any loose 
rust sediment that may have worked its way in there. So I don't know if you guys remember this one. See, it's got that sludge on it. But this was, this had rust throughout it. Now all gone. Now you may ask yourself, what do you do with this after you uh, and look at that? That's what happens. Part of it is because it's breaking down the outer layer of the metal. And I'm not a chemist, but so the next step will help seal that, waterproof it. And see, these all had, put them all in, they all had um, rust on them. And they're all got that, whatever that coating is. But anyway, so what do I do afterwards with this stuff? Honestly, I just, I'll either pour it on my, um, I'll either rinse it and pour it down the uh, drain, or I will, uh, I have a little, patch out back that I'll uh, I can dump it into but nothing in here is toxic here I mean rust is rust and and I have asked about this so this isn't just me some amateur I have asked about it and Pouring vinegar, I mean, people use vinegar as cleaning solutions. I wouldn't reuse this because, well, it's full of rust and corrosion. But I think if you were, from what I've been told, if you were to pour this down the drain, pour this down your toilet and flush the toilet afterwards, or pour it down your drain and then turn around and uh, and uh, run some water, you'll be fine. So look, you can see it's just, because it's taken off that top layer. So I'm going to finish this, and then we'll come right back. Okay, so I'm all done. I've wiped everything down. I have it sitting here. And you'll see that the metal kind of looks, you want to make sure it's all nice and dry and clean, but you're going to see, you'll see that the metal kind of has a different look to it. This is because any protective coating that may have been on it has been removed. The acid has removed it. So what we have to do now is we have to put a new layer, new protective coating on. How do we do that? Well, oil. Oil will seep in and bond with the metal, thereby creating a protective coating. But first thing you have to do is make sure you get the items dry. So I always come through with another rag after they've sat out. You don't want to sit, let them sit out overnight, just for a few minutes, just to get dry. But then I come in, I wipe them all down, get any remaining dirt off of them, and then This is the advantage of also, I'm going to plug my favorite store, Harbor Freight. Uh, they sell rags for 69 cents for like three or four of them. So every time I'm there, I'll pick up some. 
because in this case, these things, I, you know what, if they get uber dirty like my other one did, I just pitch it. It's not worth trying to wash and save. Um, so if you got old t-shirts, anything like that, that's fine too. But, so, now, here's what we're going to do. I have another... I have another container I'm going to go ahead and start putting everything into. The idea here is we just, we're going to get the maximum coverage. Now the beauty of the oil is it seeps in really well. So what I like to do here is I like to get everything kind of in place and then what I'll do is I will pour in the oil. Now I know some people use, some people pay the money and use gun oil, um, uh, three oil, honestly I just use cheap 10W30 motor oil. I find it works very well. Uh, in fact, it works just as well as any of the others. It coats very well and it protects well. There, some of you may be more chemistry minded and know better, but uh, that's what I use. And the beauty is I reuse it. So I am all about recycling. Now this is an oil that's been in a car, but This is oil. What I do is I try and liberally apply it over everything. So what I had left from last time was enough. So I'm going to pull out this. It's a, just a container, a four cycle 10W30. I got it at like Dollar General or something like that for a couple of bucks. And I'm just going to pour it on. And as I said, I reuse this so afterwards because it's not the only chemical reaction it's doing is it's soaking in. That's it. It's just going to soak in. So, and voila. Now what I'll do is I'm going to let this sit for 24 hours. And we will come back tomorrow with another rag. We will clean it and we will finish. So until then. And now we are to the final part. So this is set for 24 hours. And what we do is now air is now we take it out. So generally speaking, I take something like a pair of uh, screwdriver or something such so that my hands do not get too oily is I'll take everything out and I'll just rest it on a rag and as I said all the oil does is it's creating a seal it's bonding with the porous metal because the acidity from the vinegar went ahead and opened up any type of sealant that was there as well as removing the rust. The oil penetrates into those pores and seals the metal. Now,
will this stuff ever rust again? Maybe. Uh, I know I have several tools that I've done this with. And they have not rusted. Uh, and I've taken some of them with me outside camping. They've been, they're out in my garage. And I have yet to see them rust. One thing I will tell you, though, is for a while, these may leach. The oil in them may leach, so I would not necessarily immediately start using this. I would probably let them sit. Well, what I have done and what I've learned from, and that's the point of this, is generally I will let this stuff sit. Then I'll flip it over, pat it down, and then I'll uh, take a new rag and wipe it all down. And then once again, I put them on a new rag or a paper towel or even once I had a throwaway piece of carpet and I let them sit there and any excess oil all leached out onto that carpet, onto those rags. I did that for, I don't know, a day or two. And after that, fine. Didn't seem to have any problems at all. So... I know this isn't related directly to paracording, but I also know our tools are important. And whether it be a little mini screwdriver that you use uh, to push things through, a pair of pliers, uh, or something else, it's a pain in the butt when stuff starts rusting. So I thought this might be helpful for, uh, for all of you. Anyway. Uh, coming up, hopefully next week, we'll have an interview with uh, a paracord guy whose job is working with paracord. So uh, he's made it his career, and um, hopefully it's going to be a great interview. So until then, keep paracording. Later.